All right. Uh, bad series for the Yankees. Not a good one at all. Uh, one to forget, they were humiliated on national television twice. And uh, they, they limped off the field with a split in their first trip to Fenway this season. So we're going to get into it. It's going to be a very quick episode, very brief. We will not have any recapping, really. Just I'm just going to read a few bullet points. I'm not in the mood to talk about this. Because, again, I mean, it's just, you know, disgusting series like this aren't fun to talk about. So why would I extend the episode like we usually do? All right. Quick one. Let's talk about it. Let's get to it. Ep 389 of BD4. This is RJ Carbone, and you're listening to BD4. Show us some dexterity as well with the left hand. It's on its way. There it goes. And the Yankees are going to win. Let's go. Off the window. Unbelievable. The first punch beat through. Houston ducks under. Got it. What a chance left. What's happening, everybody? Episode 389 of BD4. I'm your host, RJ Carbone. Welcome to BD4. Welcome to the podcast. You are listening to, yes, BD4, where there's no better way to get your Yankees and Knicks analysis. We also do MMA now, too. Yanks every series, Knicks every game, MMA on weekends. So welcome. If you are new here, be sure to subscribe to the show. Download these episodes that you listen to. You can listen to the podcast on the many different platforms. Uh, Be sure to give us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts. We are currently a five-star podcast and would like to keep it that way. And you can also watch the podcast on YouTube and Spotify. Subscribe to the channel there. Welcome to the podcast, man. I uh, appreciate you stopping by. It's going to be a quick one. We're not we're not going deep at all. Uh, the last very quick one we had was against the Chicago White Sox. Um, and this is going to be a very similar one. I think that episode was maybe five minutes and we didn't even do a proper episode. This is going to be very similar to that. Maybe not five minutes, but can't say it's going to go much longer than 20 minutes tops. Um Although I know I say that all the time, then we do. But literally, this will be short. I promise you that because I, I scrapped all of my notes. I scrapped each and every one of my notes and instead just redid it all. Jotted down a couple of bullet points. We're going to get right into the point. Shoot the shit straight. And there's no need to fuck around because I've got some thoughts on this Yankees team that I want to get out there. Um, and they're not pretty ones. Um, I don't think they're overreactive thoughts either. I think they're very rational. They're thoughts I've had all season. So I'm going to tell you what I think about this Yankees team. Get a little little bit of a temperature check, state of the union, whatever you want to call it. And then once we do that, that'll be it. We'll wrap it up and we'll go to the fuck to bed because I'm tired of this shit. All right. So let's get to our first break. We'll get back real briefly and then we'll talk about this. Hey, guys. So I've noticed that only a small portion of you who watch BD4 on YouTube are actually subscribed. So if you do enjoy this podcast and maybe you want to be notified when new episodes release, I'd consider subscribing and also hitting that notification bell. This way we can help the channel grow and you won't miss a single episode of BD4. All right, let's get back to it. Ah, 
like, all right, let's cut that shit out. Let's talk about it, man. Like I said, I'm not going to waste time. I'm not in the mood to, to talk about the Yankees right now. Um, it was bad. They, they took the first two games. Yeah, it was fun. Yankees, great. Red Sox suck. And then the last two games just happened. And this team just seems to disappoint. Whenever they get too high, the disappointment eventually comes. Like like those, Especially in the four-game series. It's very similar vibes as the Tropicana Field series did. They won the first two. Things look great. Boom. The White Sox series, they won that first game. Things look great. Boom. Get swept in the doubleheader. This Fenway series. They won the first two. Things look great. Boom. So it's happened a few times now. Um, you know, the euphoria of the first game against Houston, that too. End up splitting, splitting that, losing the, the fifth game. Like... So I'm not going to waste my time and talk about how wonderful they are, how great the first two games were, because we, we've we jerked the Yankees off enough this year. I want to get into the meat and potatoes of it. Um, we'll bullet point a few problems I have with these two games. I think I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm going out of order here. This is not going to be in order. Um, it will be in order. We'll talk about game three. Some problems there. We'll talk about game four. But, like, I'm just going to list shit up. All right, because I don't have an organized note style this episode. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so, yeah, episode 389, Yanks choke at Fenway. Um, yeah. In the third game of this set, which took place on shit, Saturday night, which, by the way, having two night games on the weekend was fucking disgusting. I need my weekend day games. Um... It was annoying that Gallo had to come in for Carpenter with plenty of game left in the third game of the set. That bothered me. There was the thing in the 10th inning, and I'm literally just going off the top of my head here, with Rizzo. Why are we stealing third base with Rizzo in the 10th inning there? Like, I love, don't get me wrong, I love how it's no longer station-to-station bullshit this season with the Yankees on the bases. But this uber-aggressive style is not the answer either. So we, we have to remember not to be too stupid on the bases as well. And being stupid was one of their problems last year. But this year, they're getting away with the stupid a little more because they're running more. Now, they've been better on the bases. They've been more efficient. But they've also had moments like that. Just stupid and probably a lot more but we've gotten away with it before especially Rizzo stealing third base we've gotten away with that a few times I think he leaves Major League Baseball with three I don't ever want to see Chapman pitching a game for this team again and I said that after last night (laughs) we'll get to tonight so I had no issues with who was used Last night. All right. A lot of people wanted Chapman to come in there. He didn't. I had no issues with that. I have no issues with who was used on Saturday night. Just my issue was when they were used. Let's never go Clay Holmes for extra outs in the eighth inning ever again. Please. Because that's shown to not be working. Let's give him a clean inning. Give him the ninth and let him do his thing. Keep him on that routine. So let's stop doing that because both times he's given up runs have been in those situations. Um, I also would have went for, I would have went Peralta before Michael King. Maybe for two outs. I would have went Peralta for two outs. Then you let King pitch the remainder of the game up until the ninth when you go with Clay Holmes. That's what I would have done. Uh, Peralta has been so good, but that's now two choke jobs within, I don't know, the last month or so both against Houston and Boston. Not a good look there, and we'll talk about that, Houston and Boston. The Yankees better hope, they better damn well hope Lasagna comes back strong whenever the fuck he does come back. Um, And same with Domingo Hermann too. They need an extra bullpen arm. I'm not sure they're going after one at the deadline. We'll talk about that too. 
and again, I know we're, we're so out of order. This is just so chaotic and disorganized, but I, I don't have the time to organize it. I, I don't have the energy to organize it. Um, but if we're going to rip, you know, the Yankees rip Boone, I also didn't hate the top of the ninth inning move to pinch hit DJ LeMayu over Higashioka instead of IKF. Because IKF is as shitty of a shortstop he is, and he made another disgusting error tonight in the fourth game of the set. The guy's pathetic. He's a fucking terrible shortstop. Um, I, I didn't hate letting him hit there in the ninth, despite him not doing anything productive. I had no problem with DJ pinch hitting over Higashioka. I know the position thing was weird. Were you going to put him this and that? But they figured it out. I didn't have a problem with that. Um, I also did not hate Jordan Montgomery getting pulled at 70-something pitches last night. Um, he didn't pitch great, didn't pitch bad, but he was giving up some hard hits, some hard outs, didn't look great at the end there, and you had a great bullpen saved up ready to go, so why not use them? So I didn't hate that move either, I will say that. Um, I, what I did hate was Josh Donaldson. Absolutely pathetic and unfortunate because he had a great series with the bat prior to that play. Could have turned the double play to end the game there in the bottom of the 10th. Doesn't do it. What happens? The whole Jeter Downs, Verdugo shit happens. And the Yankees lose. So those were my issues on Saturday night. And then you got to tonight. I mean, Jamison Tyone sucks garbage water. Absolute garbage water, and we'll talk about him more specifically in a second. So why did he get to stay in the game for so long? If you're going to have a, a short leash like Fat Vermont, I mean, uh, Tyone should have that leash. He looked terrible there, and he stays in the game, giving up big hit, extra base hit after extra base hit. That's all the guy does now. He literally blew two different four-run leads in the same game. Gets to stay in the game. And then, to make matters, I would normally say worse, but it made it better for me because I got a good laugh at it. Aaron Boone goes Araldus Chapman. I shit you not, he goes Araldus Chapman in the sixth inning of a tie ball game at Fenway Park. Chapman. Literally just minutes ago, I was just saying how I don't want to see this guy pitch in a Yankee uniform ever again. But now Boone brings him into his sixth, was it the sixth inning of a 6-6 six to six game at Fenway Park. And I could have left the room knowing damn well that when I came back, the game was not going to be tied. But it didn't. I decided to just sit there and watch it happen to, to prove myself correct, and it did. Chapman comes in, Chapman comes out. I'm sorry. Chapman comes in, the game's tied, Chapman comes out, the Yanks are down. It happened again. DJ LeMayu, couple of disgusting, repulsive, pathetic, should not ever happen again plays. Should mention that. He was a big part of in that inning. But I'm not going to excuse Chapman because of DJ LeMayu's disgusting defense. He had a terrible game tonight in the field there. But Chapman has got to get it done. Chapman was not throwing strikes. Chapman almost hit a batter. He didn't look good. He did not look remotely average. He looked terrible. It's funny because not that I take anything that Aaron Boone says seriously. I, I don't. I laugh every time he speaks because it's all smoke shit. It's all smoke screen. But it's funny because he was like literally just a few days ago saying how they're going to try to keep Chapman going in low leverage situations for, for the meantime. <laughs> so that all happened. Uh, and I turned the game off as soon as Castro came in because I know that Castro is, is so efficient when, when, when they're men on base. <laughs> so I'm looking at this team, man. If you want my legitimate thoughts, I'll, I'll tell you right now. Um, they're fun. It's a fun team. Um, and again, we, we've said in, in recent episodes, I don't have that magical feeling anymore, unfortunately. That was ruined after the first Astros series a few weeks back. 
And after tonight, splitting in Fenway Park, I have even even lesser of a feeling now. Like, I was so close to buying in, calling this team special, saying they're looking like a World Series championship team. I was right there. Remember I said all they needed to do was prove themselves against the Astros. Wasn't enough for me. So after being right there, one more, you know, good stretch away from saying this team is special, they, they you know, dropped three out of five to the Astros. So that set me down. And then after this series, I'm down even further. So I don't have that magical feeling. Um, I'm not even close to that having that magical feeling anymore because the two teams that could very well be facing the Yankees in one of the first two rounds of the playoffs this season are the Boston Red Sox and the Houston Astros. And the Yankees are two and three against the Astros and they are four and three against Boston. So they are a combined six and six against those two teams this season, two and three versus those two teams on the road. So if you can't protect a close lead in a hostile environment in July and June, how do you expect to do that in October? So, yeah, I mean, they, they, they're they they're not this unstoppable force that, you know, a lot of us were fooling ourselves into thinking they were. They are good. I don't think they're great. Um, they're beatable. They're human. And they are very fucking flawed. And my concerns heading into the season. Four things. One, which we kind of talked about in Aaron Boone and his inability to make simple decisions and his, it's also his, his softness, if that's a word, obsessing over rest. And I just don't think he's the alpha to lead a team to a championship. So that's one of my concerns is Boone and his decision-making and his intensity, although he does get thrown out of more games, but just the way he manages, sometimes it's a bit too soft. So Boone is one of my, was one of my bigger problems entering the year. That's starting to rear its ugly head lately. There's one big bat sitting every night. All of a sudden the starting pitching was a big concern for me entering the season. And for so long this year, it was the Yankees' bread and butter. It was the best part of their team, right? Garrett Cole was looking dominant. Nestor Cortez was the best pitcher in the American League. Um, Jamison Tyone was in a dark horse for Cy Young right underneath Nestor Cortez. Had a 2.3 ERA at one point. Now that's over, up over four. I mean... Montgomery. There was a time when every Yankee starting pitcher had an ERA under three, except for one. And it was like a 3.01 or some shit like that. So they were dominant for so long. But now we're starting to see a little bit of regression to the mean, maybe a little bit of fatigue with the all-star break coming up. You're almost two thirds of the way through. Not almost, but you're getting there. And some guys just pitching to their career averages again, right? Cole is, is is after that start against the Red Sox where he continues to get bitched around by the Red Sox. He fell off on my list. I, I was I was close to buying in on him again. His he fell. The trust factor, the trust tree. He fell down the trust tree. He his I think his Yankees tenure so far could could best be described good, not great. He's been good for them, but has he been the guy I expected when they paid him $300 million? No. I, I think he's pitched more like a number two than he's pitched like a number one. Now, your emotions are probably going to tell you, no, you're wrong. But if you think with reason, I think you could find yourself agreeing with that statement. Cole's pitched more like a number two than a number one. I've even heard some people say number three, so don't get on me. Severino's been decent all year. He's been pretty good. I think he's been their most consistent pitcher. Montgomery, it's kind of average, kind of regressing back to who he usually is, a 3.5 to 4 ERA guy. Tyone, 
He has become BP, a batting practice pitcher. I would honestly have him throw the home run derby in two weeks. I think that that break a record. We'd see a lot of dingers. And Nestor Cortez, regressing each and every day as well. I think he'll be a 3.5 to 4 ERA guy. I don't think he's going to be great. Congrats to him for making the All-Star team. As well as, I think, Garrett Cole. But, I mean, this starting pitching is not going to cut it. I don't trust this starting pitching. I don't think there's an, there are not enough guys in this rotation where you can look at them and say, oh, we're, well, they're so-and-so, they're going to get back on track, right? You could say that with Garrett Cole, right? If Cole goes through a slump, it's like, oh, well, he's Garrett Cole. He'll figure it out because his resume is there. He has the pedigree, right? You can't say that with with uh, with Tyone. Doesn't really have the pedigree of being consistently good. You can't say that with Cortez. Sure as shit can't. Severino, he's shown it, but again, he hasn't pitched in three seasons. Him and Tyone and Cortez, the most workload they're going to see in a while. I think you need to go and get a starting pitcher. I think it's it's evident at this point. I don't think you should sit here and blame the All-Star break. Blame that they're just fatigued. I think that's what lazy, weak-minded people do. I think you have to assume the worst and make moves. If you're trying to win a World Series, you have to do everything it takes. Put your chips on the table and go and get Luis Castillo from Cincinnati, who I've wanted him for a few years now. I think he'd be a good number three. That's the best out there, I think. I don't know what the situation with Montes is, but... Go get Castillo. I think you absolutely need to get some starting pitching now. I think that's a no-brainer. I don't think that's a question anymore. Um, yeah, we're definitely surpassing 20 minutes. <laughs> the lineup. You've heard me sing my song for way long now. I'm not going to keep beating that same dead horse. But basically, cut the shit. Stop telling me about these 16 degree launch angles and these 113 miles per hour exit velocity like you did tonight on Sunday Night Baseball. I don't give a fuck. Cut the shit and go grab me a 300 hitter. That's right. I'm mentioning batting average. 17 year old Twitter cucks. Go get Andrew Benintendi, man. The kid can hit. Get me that 300 hitter. Get me that lefty contact hitter. Get me that doubles hitter. That line drive Doubles hitter. When was the last time the Yankees had a line drive doubles hitter? I'm not counting Miguel and Duhar because that was one season. Robinson Cano, who was a perennial all-star and they won a championship with Cano. You need those types. You need the guys who can hit line drives, make contact, and hit more than they strike out. You need that. Give me a Benintendi. And I love the fact absolutely love the fact, and you're going to shit on me for this if you're an analytics guy, that Benintendi only has three home runs. I love that. I love that. Get me that guy. He's literally perfect for Yankee Stadium. I think if you put him in Yankee Stadium, he can maybe even run into 15 home runs. Maybe more. But he's going to be in the lineup for the Yankees because he's a lefty who puts the bat on the ball, hits line drives, and hits in high volume. DJ LeMay was not the same type of hitter anymore. He's not that guy anymore. So you're not getting that 300 hitter from anybody. Judge is a power hitter. He's he's a complete hitter, sure, but he's not a 320 hitter like he was before the arbitration. He's been slowing down lately. Go grab a 300 hitter who makes contact. You missed that opportunity with Michael Brantley a few times. I was wanting him forever. You missed a, you know, an opportunity to get... Similar style hitter in, in Machado, who's much better, not comparing the two. But Benintendi's the best guy out there. I don't want Hap. I don't want Reynolds as much as I do Andrew Benintendi. That's the number one guy you have to look at if you're the Yankees. Call the Royals up. He's a 27-year-old on a team that's going nowhere. He's going to be a free agent at the end of the season. Go grab Andrew Benintendi. Rent him. Maybe even lock him up if he does well for you. But you need that type of hitter in your lineup. 
That's way too important to just shrug aside and say, no, he doesn't have enough power. Look where that's gotten them. The Yankees, every postseason, go home. And the main reason because of that is because they can't hit in volume enough. They don't have enough consistent, actual contact hitters in that lineup. Can't rely on DJ anymore to be that guy. Can't rely on Aaron Judge to be that guy because he's a guy who's going to hit 50-something home runs. He's going to strike out. He's not going to be a 300 hitter. Which Judge has, Judge, Judge has got to start hitting Boston, by the way. Don't want to start getting there, but like, that's like the one thing missing on Aaron Judge's resume is he's not able to hit the Red Sox. Or he's not able, I should, I should rephrase that. I don't know what the numbers are, but he, he hasn't dominated. I know that. He hasn't dominated the Red Sox, and I feel like that's the one team I would like him to dominate is the Red Sox. Like, do it against the Orioles. No one cares. Do it against the Red Sox. I mean, your fandom's somehow going to grow. So the starting pitching definitely needs help. The lineup definitely needs help. Go grab Ben and and stop cutting the shit. Or cut the shit. And the bullpen, I honestly, I think they need one of each, man. I do. I think they need one of each. Get another bullpen. Uh, get another relief pitcher. Because I trust nobody, and it's been like this for a bit. I don't trust anybody really outside of Clay Holmes and Michael King. Uh, you know what? I'll give you Wandy Peralta. He shifted the bed both times against Houston and Boston, but I'll give you him. Okay, he's been good most of the season. So, Holmes, King, and Peralta. That's it. I don't trust Miguel Castro. Guy's a joke with men on base. He's a joke if he's not given a clean inning. I don't want that. I can't trust. You need another guy you can trust in those tight, high leverage spots. Castro is not it. Ronald Chapman certainly ain't it. If Castro's a joke in those spots, Ronald Chapman is an entire stand-up special of jokes. Litke is some random journeyman bum who's probably going to be DFA'd as soon as these other arms come back. He ain't it. Abreu, Sears, nice talent, but prospects are prospects. They're unpredictable. Can't rely on them. Rip off the Pirates again. Go get David Bender, Bender, whatever the hell his name is. I don't know, man. I don't, I don't, I, I just think this Yankees team... Despite the record, oh yeah, it's great and all. I don't know that I'm going to call them a World Series title contending team. They've shown to have some tremendous holes these last several weeks. They are now, did I say this? I did. I was going to say they're 6-6 six and six against Boston and Houston this year. And I think they're 10-6, and 10-7, 10-6 since the beginning of that Houston Astros four-game set. 12-8. Since the game against the Blue Jays where the bullpen blew it. It's not been the same. It's not been the same. It's not been the same feeling. I think a lot of us feel like that, but don't want to say it. I'll say it. It's not been that same magical feeling for a bit now. I don't think this team is is a World Series title contending team as it stands. Do I think they have a shot to look like that, at least on paper, in a few weeks? Sure. But that that says that Cashman is going to do the right thing. And not shop at Walmart for another bat or an arm. So we'll see. Bad, bad, bad series. There's no way to put it. It wasn't a decent series. It wasn't, okay, we'll settle for the split. Not bad, no. This was a bad series if you're a Yankees fan and you're held to the expectation that you're held to. They could not get the job done against Boston. They flopped once again when they were peaking. Looked like they were just going to keep it rolling. And they choked big time. So their bullpen is not as great as people think. Their lineup has always been hot and cold, hit or miss, not enough to win the playoffs. And they're starting pitching, starting to come back down to earth, and people are starting to realize who they actually are. Some decent pitchers in there, but there's no, like I say with them all the time, high ceiling, low floor. They're starting to come back down to that floor. So, those are my thoughts. That's it. I'm done. Wrap it up. No question of the day. Nothing like that. I, I'm fucking ending this episode here. You know what? No. We'll get to the question of the day. Mm. Fuck it. Let's head to our final break, and we'll wrap it up with the question of the day. So, 
So BD4 is on so many platforms to listen to. You can listen to us on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, SoundCloud. You can listen to us on Spotify. You can find us on our sponsor, Anchor, and many other listening platforms as well, wherever you get your podcasts. But we are also available to watch on YouTube. So if you want to watch us on YouTube, go subscribe there. But if you prefer to listen to us, again, many, many, many listening platforms. Just be sure to subscribe, download, give us a rating, a review, comment, share the podcast, and all that fun stuff. This is BD4, where there's no better way to get your Yankees and Knicks analysis. All right, welcome back to the show, episode 389 of BD4. Let's get to it. Let's wrap it up with our NYY, NYK, MMA question of the day. True or false, the Yankees have more championship appearances and victories than any other team in North American pro sports. Is that true or false? True or false. The Yankees have more championship appearances and victories than any other team in North American pro sports. Let me know the answer wherever you can reach me. If you get it correct, I'll give you a shout out on the next show. If you get it incorrect, I'll let you know what the answer is at least. I'm your host, RJ Carbone. You're listening to episode 389, maybe watching episode 389. Thank you for doing so. Yankees split in Boston. Not a good series. Not a good vibe right now with the team. Got to figure it out. I don't even want to watch the Cincinnati Red Series coming up because it means nothing. It's just the two most meaningful series of the year. The Yankees have went out there and done an average job. Right? They split against Houston. Then they lost the fifth one. They uh, split it in Fenway after taking the first. Like it just Those are the two I wanted to see. I just wanted that, and then I would have bought in. Can't do that, and that's what's keeping me from really buying in. So, these next few weeks, I'm not going to have much of a of an excitement to me, maybe, um, until we do something at the deadline. And if we go out there on the deadline day and do nothing but shop at Walmart, I am so out on this team. So out. <laughs> Lord, if that happens, I'll see you next time, guys. Ciao. This podcast is brought to you by Anchor. It's the best way to make a podcast. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm.